Okay, this video is on our um, International 434 injection pump and as you can see I've got it all apart and the pull apart video was just a bit of a quickie just to let you know how to pull it apart but we're going to go into a lot more depth here now. So the housing here I've cleaned and I've bead blasted. I've got a little blast and blasted it with glass beads and that gives us a nice, nice new look. Um, at the moment it'll mark with fingers but that's okay but what I, we'll put this away in a second but what I'd like to do is just show you the seal now this is the um, the main input seal so where your gear drives here um, it seals on this shaft on, on this piece here so um, you can't actually muck this up um, well I suppose anything can be mucked up but um, the spring side of the seal, you can see a little spring in the back there, the spring side goes down. Now look, all I'm doing here is I've got an inch and a sixteenth impact socket and they have nice flat surfaces on them. So all I want to do, I've put a bit of oil on the seal as well. Let's just tap that in until it comes home. You see it went quite easily. and that's all we need to do. You can see there's a hole through there and that comes up through the case. You can see a little slot. Where's the light there? Just there. And that lets any extra pressure out so it doesn't force diesel fuel into your sump. So if you have diesel getting into your sump, mixing with your engine oil and it happens really quickly most likely it's this seal has gone very hard and um, you can when, with the pump sitting like out there you can pull this out without dis disassembling the whole pump you can replace this seal and you can get it back in again so that's worth keeping in mind but for the moment we're going to put the pump body out of the way and I'll just pop it on the stand over here and we'll have a look at all this stuff so you have the main pump drive, that's where the gear bolt's on. This little mark here is for the gear dowel. So you can't bugger the timing up unless the gear has actually moved a key, a tooth in the timing train, which is highly unlikely. They, they usually have them so they can't. You just bolt the gear back on correctly. You've got a master spline in there. Now a master spline, you can see that double spline there. You can see they're all evenly spaced, then there's a gap and then when you come around the back there's a fat one that's a master spline so that can only go in here one way like you can push it there all you like it won't go in until you get that lined up and then pop in she goes so the thing we have to look at here now you have the seal sealing around the outside of the drive here to seal oil or fuel from coming up the spline and into your sump that way. There's a little lowering here. You see a little fat fella. And it also it also holds this basket on when you've got it off like this, but no real worry there. So in your Sparex kit now, the kit we're using is a Sparex S. Can you see that? There we go, 57135. I use a heap of these, I do this job often. So we'll just make sure that the two O-rings are the same size, I've got the right one. Pop him down there, into the little groove. And that's what it should look like when you're done that o-ring on the groove there. So when this spline comes down over the shaft there there's a nice smooth edge inside here that seals on the o-ring so we've sealed inside the coupling and we've sealed outside the coupling so hopefully no diesel gets through. Now this is your main pump head. Now the reason we pulled this apart was because 
this is off a, a Toft cane loader with a 434 International engine in it and we didn't know what the pump was like, whether it was full of water or whatever and we would normally pull all this apart but we don't need to. Now what I want to show you here is you can see when I push the roller at the bottom so there's a roller at the top, there's a roller at the bottom if you put it down that way and you push the bottom one and it goes up you can see that roller moving so it's going back down under its own weight so you can see that well what happens is your little transfer pump at the end here pushes fuel up through this hole here and past the orifice here and there's two little plungers, little pistons in the centre of the pump here and they actually put pressure in to pop them out so these rollers are actually pushed out against this bracket here so the one set of pistons inside here does every every single cylinder so there's only one set of piston, one set of elements inside there and as the pump turns around and the fuel's in there, it hits this cam track. Now, if you remember this cam, remember look for the arrow, the arrow's there. So, you'll also see that in the cam, you can see a piece where there's no wear, and then you bring it round and you can see a shiny piece where the rollers hit. So, what happens is the, the little pump at the end with the veins in it, it puts a little bit of pressure in here, it pops the rollers out, this little cage there it stops them going too far so they don't go out far enough to rub on the cam track all the time but because they're pushed out when they come around and they hit this little bump here both pistons or the rollers push the pistons in and they go pop and at that very time you've either got number one two three or four lined up to fire so if you have a tractor that's firing on one, two and three and missing on number four, people say, oh, the injection pump's buggered, you know, the element must be crook or something like that. Well, in these rotary pump, it, it just can't happen. It's not, not how it works. There's some other problem. But for those to be nice and free, that means we don't need to pull this apart. If we pull this apart, it's very important to mark where that little, that little cutout there is and get it back in the same place. Okay, how do you hot these up? What you do is you loosen these, you turn that cage, which in turn lets these rollers come out further. So when the, when the pump is in the, in the injection room getting set up, they put a pressure out here, then they get a micrometer, not a dungaree or well one like this one, they get a micrometer and they measure across there. And it tells them that with this pump that that measurement needs to be a certain thing. So to hot them up, you loosen this, and you can actually do it through the side of the pump. You loosen these two off, they're 5 16th double hex, a um, little spanner like that. And you can just bump that around a little bit. And what that does, <coughs> that lets these rollers come out a puffteenth further. That's a metric puffteenth. Now, <laughs> it lets them come out a little bit more so the pistons are further apart inside, so there's a little bit more fuel in there. So they get a little bit more fuel in there, then when it comes round and hits the cam track here, it'll hit it probably slightly sooner, and because the pistons, the plungers in here are further apart, it gives it more fuel, and they just go pop, and as, they, as the rollers here push them together quickly, that puts your fuel charge out. So these rollers are limited, so if you change the setting here, let the rollers come out just a little bit, like a half a millimetre, tenth hour, something like that, it'll increase the fuel a lot. So anyway, if you want to muck with that, that's up to you. I'm just showing you, I'm telling you a story really. So, so once again, you can see the master spline there. So you can see that. So, <coughs> not I mean. This can only go in one way. The pump drive can only go in one way. And I can't line it. There you go. 
So it's not in, it's not possible for you to mistime the head to the basket to the gear. It just can't happen. It, it won't go together. So don't get too worried about that. Um, now this head, because I know that those plungers inside are nice and free. Now if I push this bottom one up and that one stuck up and stayed there, we'd know that there was a bit of diesel varnish inside on the two plungers and they weren't free to move on themselves, within themselves. So look, that's fine. I'm, I'm very happy with that, it's easy. Um, nothing to do here. Um, no need to pull that out normally. That's left hand thread, but if you put a screwdriver or a bar in there, you'll break that off for sure. I have a proper socket I made for it, but I, we don't need to do it. We're just resealing this pump, having a quick look and seeing how it goes. So, if you have the pump leaking around the body where the injector lines come off, um, that's this tiny little O-ring there. It's big in diameter, but a small in section. So, all we have to do is roll that down over. That sits in that little groove there. And that's, that's all we need to do. Now just remember we're resealing this pump. We're not rebuilding the world. <laughs> we're not, we're not um, fixing a pump that's not working. We believe it's working. Well, we, we don't know it's working, but we, I think it is working from what I can see. So what we can do now, we can get the pump body here. Oh, that's what I was going to show you too. Now I just took it out and put it here. There we go. That little flat washer there. Now, it's a flat washer with flat sides. And the sides are flat, so it can fit down where the master spline is and kick sideways. So, that stays down there. And what happens there is that pulls tight against the end of this shaft here. So make sure you put that in. So it goes in first, then this funny spring washer, and then the bolt that holds it all together. So, so for the moment, I'll, I'll get a little bit of oil. I dropped my oil can a minute ago. Now, I'm putting a bit of oil here because engine oil's around this end. Um, a lot of these parts, you can um, dunk them in a pot of diesel so they're all lubricated well. Um, we don't really need to do that, but anyway, we'll see. So what I'd like to do is just put a little bit of oil around here. A little bit of oil inside. It's lubricated by fuel normally, but just for the video, we're just doing this. Okay, now, this basket goes in, so it just goes up the housing there. Now we need to turn it all until we can line up those master splines. So we, we can't go wrong with it. I'm just turning one spline at a time. There we go, that just slid in there then. So, make sure you've got some of this CRC brake cleaner with you. Um, for a quick clean up on the little parts, that's all you need. So for this one here, you put the spring washer on, then you find your 5 16th Allen key that you had to undo it.
and you do that up. You can feel the spring tension of that funny shaped spring. What I like to do here is you can pop it in the vise or do what you like, but I just like to use this little flat. If I have the bolts, I don't have the bolts this time to hold that. Um, if I have the bolts from the gear, I often just put two bolts in. But this one here, I try and pick up the flats there. Okay. That's going to be tight enough. That's not going anywhere. So, so when you look down the guts there, we've got the basket in there. Now, as you know, this next section here, when it goes in, you can't put it in wrong. Um, well, I suppose you can. Now I've said that. Um, you have holes around the body here. You have a big one here. Little one, little one and um, you can put the head in wrong um, as in you have to line those up so the biggest thread the big one goes down to the bottom there like that and what that does that leaves the little hole here with no thread at the top for your metering valve so this is our cam track now our cam track if you remember there's an arrow on it Okay, and we can see the arrow when it came out. So that little arrow has to go down there and you can see a little screw there, a little hole that holds that cam track in place. So I think bring it up a little bit. I just want to check that first. I think that's a screw, but I just want to make sure. That's the one. And a bit of brake cleaner. Now we need to find a copper washer to fit on there in our kit. So. Washers by the dozen in here. That's a bit loose, that one. This one. That's the one. I'll just check I've got the right one there. There's no others. They're all the same. Is this the same? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'll put a bit of oil around here. That's just to help it. To help it slide in nice and easy, it was getting a little bit of stuck before. I need to pop that back in. Once again, we better check. There's the arrow. You can see the arrow. That is most important. Now, if you had an injection pump, you wanted to make it turn the other way, you could actually put that in around the other way. And It'll be a left hand turn and pump, not a right hand turn and pump. So. There we go, that's sliding nicely. And for the moment, I'll just do that up finger tight. I'll go over, once it's in the bracket later, we'll check everything else out. And this O ring, we need a little bit of lube around that O ring. And that's just so when it comes down into the housing here, we're good. So, okay, the, the male section of that master spline is facing the top. 
So we'll try and face this to the top and turn it so it's something like that. So we shouldn't be far off there. We've got to make sure we haven't cut that o-ring as it goes in either. And I have done that in the past. So that's feeling good. So we need to turn that a bit. We need a big hole lined up there. Um, I might just grab one of the screws here. We'll line that big hole up there. Okay, looks like, looks like we've got it. We can turn the bottom. So. We still need to go a little bit further. That big bolt won't do up. Whatever I've done with it. just needs yeah, it needs to come in that little bit more that looks pretty good Does that big fella screw in Okay, well, give him a bit of a hit with our brake cleaner. We'll find a nice copper washer to go on there. Like that one there. I think that's pretty good. Sure the o-ring this copper washer comes back up there okay so that's just firm there I'll give this a bit of a that looks nicer doesn't it <laughs> See how we go. Okay, I've, I've put the pump in the bracket, in my vice bracket here. There's a little bit of shadow down the bottom end, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. And what I've done is I've fitted the crank drain with a copper washer or aluminium washer. Just nipped him up firm so we know it's um, not going to leak. Now the big bolt down the bottom that held the head in I've nipped him up and I've also fitted now at the back of the pump is a bolt on the front of the pump where the plate is there's the bleed screw that you can get to later so they both hold this head in place so they've just both got a copper washer on them nip them up firm job done now we're up to popping the metering valve and some of these little components on the top in. And now, with the governor, you have two flats on here. Now, if you remember on the governor basket, there was a round piece and it had two flat sections on it. 
you must make sure the flat sections are up so these pieces here those two can sit on it then the metering valve um, look on assembly here I'm just using a bit of CRC 556 um, we just want a bit of a lube diesels as good as any but all I'm looking to do here is get the metering valve down in the hole where it needs to be hold all this in place pop the metering valve down and let this the bottom of those two flats sit on the flats on the governor so what we're looking for is that there so you can see now that it's sitting down you can see the plates fully down on the top of the body here and the metering valve was loose enough in the housing that it's nice and free so sometimes if you have a lot of water in a pump um, and this is jammed shut because of your your stopper rod comes through comes through that hole there and your stopper rod actually pushes that shut and it sits there closed so with a bit of moisture down the bottom in your pump it actually stays shut so you can pull on your throttle to open it up and this comes back you think you've got it opened up but the metering valve hasn't moved so it's quite simple to pop the top off and just make sure that's moving so that's done <coughs> pardon me now this has a little plate that goes down on top of it like that and this is when you put the stopper in well actually now is an ideal opportunity to find your little lock tab for that plate pop that down over the edge and get that little screw in the lock tab the little the little dropped corner on the lock tab and goes on the flat just in there and we can tighten we can just firm that up the o-ring pick in to hold it in place so that stops the plate from moving really okay now we have a couple of these little lock tabs <coughs> the lock tabs is new ones in the Sparex kit one longer than the other let's have a look no, both the same size so with the lock tab sitting out like that and like that these long screws can now be fitted So they just come down into the hole there. Need to have a look over the side there for a minute come around the back of the camera yep and the flat on this one here it sort of guides where the where the top cover comes down <coughs> what I mean so you don't need to do these up too tight like they're just holding a little plate in and giving the top cover something to bolt onto <coughs> and this fella here he goes in there and he actually sits under the tab on this side so that when your stopper comes on it sort of holds it all in place it runs down the inside of your top cover that I haven't cleaned up yet so if I find my little 3 8 panel that I undid them with
That's fine. There will be a little talk for them, but I've never bothered with it. I just usually bolt them up, and I try and make sure this, these um, tabs on the side, they remain straight. And this little one in here, the quarter spanner fits. Now you don't have to do them tight, they're only little. So to see if everything's lined up and working properly, I have to push the lock tab up. Push those fellas up there. These two fellas up there. And the two back ones. And that should stop them from coming out. This little lever can go back in there. Now the lock tab's up. So when it's stopped, yeah, the metering valve doesn't move. But when you open the stopper, it moves freely, it moves nicely. So that's all we need to do just for that piece. Um, that's all that works there. Um, I will go away now, I'll tidy up the top cover and before we put the top cover back on here I'll show you how to deal with leakage out of these shafts here.